Welcome to Introduction to Modern Astronomy. Astronomy, fill this in on your notes, is the scientific study of stars, planets, and other objects in outer space. Our other objects in outer space is a very broad topic. It can include things like um, other galaxies, novas, nebulas, the possibility of extraterrestrial life, dwarf planets, so on and so forth. Every day NASA posts an astronomy photo of the day. Space is really cool and there's a ton of really awesome stuff to look at. Here we have a picture of the night sky. This constellation right here is Orion's belt. Um, the theory behind Orion's belt or the story behind him is that he was a great hunter and he was challenged um, to be the world's greatest hunter, so he said he'd go out and kill the biggest beast. On his hunting travels, he died by the bite of a scorpion. Here we've got a solar eclipse. Two nebulas colliding. Nebula is just a big ball of gas and dust. Here's a active galaxy that's about the size of the Milky Way that was discovered by the Hubble Space Telescope. It was actually a school teacher that found this galaxy. Here we have Saturn, one of our gas giants, and its ice moon. This was taken by um, Cassini. In astronomy, what did we think? What do we used to think? Um, the geocentric model the moon, sun, and other known planets revolved around the Earth, and it was proposed by the ancient Greeks. They based this off some biblical things that said the Earth was firm and the Earth stood still, so they proposed that the Earth was in the center here and everything else rotated around it. Here we've got another picture of this. Some reasons why they may have thought this. The sun always rises and sets in the same place in the sky. Um... The stars go across the night sky. If you look at Jupiter, when it's nighttime out, it looks like a big star, and they could see it rotating across the sky. So they thought that they were firm in the center and everything else rotated around it. Another model, um, this is when we started to get the big picture of what's actually going on, is the heliocentric model. The Earth and other planets orbit the sun. This was discovered by Aristocris. Aristocles was a really forward-thinking person in his time. Um, he proposed this model, but his scale was very, very off. He didn't get the vastness of space. Later on, have proposed by Nicholas Copernicus, and he actually is the father of modern astronomy. He was the guy that kind of put it all together and got the scale right. Um, he proposed in the Middle Ages that the Earth is a planet and that it revolves around the Sun. Element 112 on the periodic table is actually named after Nicholas Copernicus, Copernicum. He did not discover it, but since he was gr such a great scientist, we named it after him. The next two astronomers to follow Copernicus were Brahe and Kepler. Over here we have Brahe and Kepler. Interesting story about Brahe and his goofy looking nose right here. Brahe was also a mathematician. Him and his cousin had gotten an argument about solving a math problem. Because neither of them had the math required to solve it, they settled it by a duel, and his cousin cut off his nose. Years later, when we were digging up Brahe's body, his skull was tainted green because his nose was made out of copper and left his bones green. Brahe... Uh, petitioned the king of France, England, England, not France, to build this observatory right here, and he was one of the first people to have an observatory to study space. After he died, Kepler, his assistant, stole some of his ideas, and he gets most of the credit for this, and they discovered that the paths of celestial bodies travel in what's called an ellipse. So ellipse right here is pretty much just an elongated oval. Kepler also defined an astronomical unit, which is the average distance between the Sun and the Earth. 
So as we learned before when we were talking about the seasons of the Earth, we have a perihelion and an aphelion, or the distance here and here, and one is longer than the other, but we just average it out and we call that one astronomical unit. So one astronomical unit is from the Sun to Earth. Mars is about 1.5 astronomical units away, so we measure space based on this, which is 150 million kilometers. Our next famous astronomer is Galileo Galilei. Galileo was the man credited for um, constructing the first telescope. Galileo was a very famous guy. He at first was sent to priest school to study medicine. Then he continued on in science and was eventually banned from the Catholic Church due to his work. When Galileo died, he was buried at a monastery, but then they had to move his body. And when they were moving his body, a fan clipped his middle finger on his right hand as a souvenir. This is Galileo's middle finger. This, his middle finger is currently on display at a museum in Florence, Italy. It looks like Galileo would have had a really long finger, but that's actually this whole bone right here. So he did not have extraordinarily long fingers. He again is credited with the telescope. Here's Galileo's first telescope. He would use it to look in space, and this led to four major discoveries. For this telescope to work, it worked a lot like glasses, and they have a convex lens or a lens that curves. There was two lenses in his early telescope, which helped magnify images. Here's a modern-day telescope. As you can see, they have grown massively in size. We also have telescopes that we can send out into space. He discovered the four moons or satellites of Jupiter. He discovered that the planets are not just light. The moon's surf surface is not smooth and the sun has sunspots or darker regions. So here's Jupiter's four main moons. He discovered these through looking through his telescope. He also discovered that the planets are not just light. If we were to look at Jupiter in the night sky, it would look just like this star right here. When Galileo looked through his telescope, he could see that Jupiter was actually a circular sphere, and he thought that they were flat disks, kind of like frisbees, out in the sky. Here's our moon. With the naked eye, the moon would look like this. Through magnification of the moon, he discovered these darker spots or craters on the moon, so it's not just a smooth surface. And finally, through looking at the sun, he could see darker regions on the sun, which were called sunspots. Uh, before he died, Galileo actually went blind. Isaac Newton. Isaac Newton is a very famous mathematician and scientist. He um, discovered forces in physics. As you've seen in my classroom, I have those Newton's balls that hit each other and they keep swinging back and forth. Force equals mass times acceleration. For every force, there's an equal and opposite force. He didn't have the math behind this to explain it, so he invented calculus to explain the forces of physics. Isaac Newton also discovered the force that holds the planets in or orbit, which he called universal gravitation. So the larger an object is, the more mass it has, the more gravity it's going to have, which is why the sun can hold so many things outside of it because it has a very large mass. He also said that the more distance we have between the mass, the less gravity we get. So things all the way out here have a less, less of a gravitational pull towards Earth than the things in here. Here's our current solar system model. Got the asteroid belts, our big gas giants out here, and our inner terrestrial planets. One way to remember the order of our planets is by this saying, my very eager mother just served us noodles. So our planet number one right here, my is Mercury. My very number two is Venus. My very eager three is Earth. My very eager mother four, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars. My very eager mother just is Jupiter right here, number five. My very eager mother just served Saturn, number six. 
Number seven is Uranus, the only planet to rotate on its side. And our eighth planet is Neptune for noodles. So my very eager mother just served us noodles. Pluto is number nine, and if you're looking at your paper, you can see that the orbit of Pluto is different than all of the other planets, which is one reason it lost its planethood.